So in the previous tutorial videos, we learned about for loops. In this video, we're going to learn about while loops. And this is the kind of a flowchart and tabular tracing we'd like to show you in the case of while loop. But if you can understand what happened in the case of for loop, in the while loop, it's actually easier for you to understand because everything will be very explicit rather than having the three parts for the for loop. But we'll see. Okay. So now what I will do is, again, let's do something very similar to what we did previously. In the case of for loop, we simply run for exactly three iterations. Let's see how we can achieve the same output behavior using while loop instead. Okay. So now what I will do is I will simply go for uh, right click on the projects, new, and then let's say class. Uh, what I would say, I would say while loop. Okay, while. And simply because it's a single keyword you have to learn, while. Okay, click on main finish okay so now let's do the following so now let's do simply uh we'll do the user input and output in the next video but let's just go something very uh easy okay so i can say now i simply just have to say while over here and there's no semicolon remember in the case of the for loop you're going to put two semicolons in order to have three sections for your for loop header in the case of the while loop you don't do anything like that okay you only have to specify the state condition for the while loop okay and what about loop counter? In the loop counter, you have to declare outside the while loop. Okay, you're gonna say integer i initialized to be one, like how we did in the for loop, and then while i less than or equal to three, which means one and two and three are allowed. As soon as it is incremented to four, it will be, uh, uh, it will actually make the state condition false. So we exit from the while loop. And make sure it's a very common, common mistake that you forgot to really increment your loop counter to make a progress. It's really important. At the end of the while loop, you can say i plus plus, exactly what we did in for loop. You can, you can think about this part over here. In the case of for loop, you will simply put it here. In the case of the for loop, for this part, you will simply put it here, right? But in the while loop, you just don't have the three sections for the header. For the header for the while loop, you only have the state condition. It's just the syntax. You just gotta live with it, okay? So now, uh, what should we do for each repetition? We can say system out dot print line over here. I can say i is okay, and then I can say over here i. Okay, now the behavior will be exactly the same as a for loop. Let's verify that uh, by run it, and then we'll do flowchart, and we'll do tabular tracing, and then we'll do debugger. Okay, we could all show you all the three to make sure you really can completely understand the while loop. Okay, in some way, while loop is easier to understand to trace than for loop for some reason. Not to me, but maybe to you, for loop is easier, but it's fine. Okay, let's see this. So we will simply go back to package explorer, and then we say right click on the while loop class, and then say run as Java application. Okay, you will see i is one, i is two, i is three. Okay, as expected. So now what I would do is, let's move on to the iPad. So we're gonna do similar tracing over here. So that's what I would do, okay? Let me just copy this fragment of code and then we're gonna trace it. Okay, let me just copy that. Let me move on to iPad and then let me add a new page. Okay, uh, add a page below, current template. Okay, let's now paste it. Okay, let me paste the code over here. Okay, let's see exactly how we can trace it. Okay, so now we're gonna do a flowchart first. Okay, so now let me just see my color convention over there, if I can just follow them. Okay, so now we got this, this, okay. Pink, orange, and green. Okay, so now what I would do is, what I would do is, first of all, we have a uh, initialization, for, in, in, initialization for the loop counter. So we got integer, let me just put it a little bit thinner. So we got integer i is assigned to one. That's outside the while loop. And then we simply got this. Okay, and then this is how we get to execute stuff from here. And then after this, we're going to go into uh, checking the state condition over here for the while loop. In which case I'm gonna use orange, right? This is orange part. Okay, this is uh, the orange, gonna say i less than or equal to three, 
and this is the des decision point for us to make, right? Either you can say either you can evaluate it true or false. In the case where it is false, we're simply just going to exit from the loop. Okay, so now this will be the false case. Okay, that'll be the false. And in the case of true, we're going to execute these two lines as the body of the uh, while loop, right? This is called the body. And this part over here is a state condition. Okay, and let's do that. Okay, in the case where it is true, we're going to execute line by line. So now the first line is just going to be this particular line sitting in the other print line. So I got print line. And then i is plus i. Okay, and then we also have at the end of the iteration over here, at the end of, uh, let me just put it a little bit back. Okay. At the end of the iteration over there, we also have I plus plus, right? Let me just make it touching. So that'll be a little bit better to, to see. Okay, just like that. Okay, and we also got this particular line over here. Let me mark it in green over here. I plus plus, right? So now how do we do that? So now in that case, we're going to uh, go into that particular one. So after this, we're going to uh, execute that part i plus plus okay and then it's going to be another block of statements over here and then let's uh, make it touching over here and then after that we're going after the end of the uh, after the end of the iteration we're going to go back and check this state condition again keep checking until it becomes false so we can exit from the loop basically right so now what we will do is we're going to uh, just going to go back to checking this particular uh, state condition again. Okay, that's how it goes. Okay, that's a flow chart, very easy to draw. Okay, hopefully you can understand, help you understand uh, the basic structure for the for, uh, while loop. Okay, we're gonna, alongside, we're gonna uh, have a look at how we can trace it using a table. Okay, we'll do uh, both together. Since you already got some prior exposure to such tracing for the for loop, so it should be quite easy for you to follow. Okay, so what I will do is, again, I'm going to uh, actually draw uh, two things over here. So we're gonna trace both the value for i and also the state condition, right? So we got the value for i and also the state condition i less than or equal to three. Okay, so these are the two important values that we have to trace in order to understand the behavior. Okay, let me put it here. Okay, so now let's try, okay? Initially, what we would do is, uh, let me just go with, uh, what about just uh, choose maybe uh, pink to begin with. So now we go with the pink over here. That means we're going to execute this block of code, which is going to initialize i to be one. Okay, let me just oh, go over here. So I would just be one after that. And then after that, we're going to evaluate this particular state condition for the very first time. If it is true, we're going to go into the while loop for the very first time. Otherwise, if it's false already, we don't even enter the while loop for the first time, right? Pretty much like how we analyze the for loop. So now, what this will evaluate is, you can know, you can see that i at the moment is simply just one. So one less than or equal to three is going to give us uh, true. That means we have to go into the loop and execute the body for the very first time, right? And the body contains two lines. Let's execute the lines one by one. The first line is just going to be, is simply print line, and i is simply i. In that case, it's just going to be uh, over here, uh, i. Okay, let me just, uh, actually, I don't mean to put this particular single crow over here, right? So let me just get rid of it, otherwise it's confusing to you. Let me just get rid of it. Okay, so now let me just go back over here. Okay, so now what I really mean to say over here is I would be simply just one at the moment, right? So that's why at the console we'll say I is one. Okay, that's the first console output, right? And then after that, we are just going to execute the second line of the body, right? And then it's going to be I plus plus. I plus plus is going to execute, is going to, uh, let me see what the, so now it's gonna be I plus plus. So it's going to increment I from one to two. So I'm gonna put two over here. 
okay, to two. And then let me, from now on, let me use blue, okay? And then for blue over here, so now that means we're going to go back to the state condition over here, and then we want to check this condition for the second time, right? If you want to check it for the second time, so now this time over here, so simply since we got blue, okay, so that means I over here is simply just two, right? So that means we're evaluating two less than or equal to three, and we know that it is still true. So that means we're going to uh, go into the loop body over here, execute the two lines of code over here for the second time, right? So now we're going to execute this print line statements over here, and we know that uh, in this case, i is simply just 2. It has to be incremented from 1, right? So that means i is 2. That's the second line of uh, output to the console. And then we're going to uh, go execute the second line of the body of the loop. And then we're going to simply just execute i++ plus plus for the second time, right? It's going to uh, increment from 2 to 3. So now what I would do is I'll simply choose another color. What about green? Okay, so now it's gonna be, going to be from two to three. And then, so now that means, uh, let me choose green over here. We're going to go back to this particular uh, state condition here and gonna evaluate that for the third time, right? You can see the layer over here, right? That's intentional. So now when we evaluate this for the third time, so what we have over here is I is now three, right? Three. So that means we're evaluating three less than or equal to three. That's simply just going to give us true. Right? So that means we're going to go into the third time into the body of the loop, right? Third time. And then we're going to execute this block of code over here. And then remind you about over here, i is simply three, right? Three over here. So that means i is three. It's the output to the console at third time. So, so far we got three lines of console output. And then we're going to execute also this block of code for the third time, i++. Right? So I plus plus is actually going to increment I from three to four. I'm gonna put in red, okay? And then red, so that means we're going to go back to checking the same state condition for the fourth time, right? So now you can see the layer over here. That means we're gonna execute this, check this condition here for the fourth time. So that means I will be, uh, sorry. So now I will be, in this case, simply just four. So that means we're checking four less than or equal to three is going to be false, right? Again, the same idea as before. As as long as, let me just say this, as long as the state condition over here evaluate to true, we're going to keep repeating to execute the body of the for loop, uh, sorry, the while loop, the same case for the for loop. As soon as the state condition becomes false, we do not try to repeat the execution for the body anymore, right? That's that's the point when we try to exit, right? So that means we're gonna repeat the execution for this particular print line here for exactly one, two, and three, three times. As soon as we reach four, it's just going to make the state condition here false, so we don't do that anymore. So there's no fourth line. So only one, two, and three, three lines of code, okay? So hopefully you're comfortable with this. Please try to review this flowchart and tabular tracing uh, both uh, for your own sake. Okay, so now let's go back to here. Let me try to trace it again for you using the debugger, okay? Since we now, we learned about debugger for this particular tutorial uh, in, the, in the latest tutorial uh, videos, we want to practice as much as possible. So you get prepared for your lab exercises and also for your lab test and also for your future programming career. So now let's put a breakpoint at line number six. Okay, double click on the blue area here. And you see the breakpoint. So now I will simply right click on the same class while loop, and then I will say debug as Java application. Okay. So now what it, what do I expect to see? You can see now I'm pausing at line number six right before I try to execute this particular line. Right. So if I say step over, what do I expect to see? I expect a new variable i to of value one to appear on the variables panel over here. And for the expressions, I can simply delete the previous one. I can say right click and then say remove all for now. Okay, so we get completely clean view for us. So now I can say, if I say step over, you can see that when I go to variables, you can see i has been initialized to be one. If I move my mouse over one, I can see one. 
Oh, sorry, if I move my mouse over I, I can see one here, right? So now let's go to expressions. So now we're going to evaluate this particular state condition for the very first time, right? Pretty much like a one less than or equal to three. What would that be? If I try I less than or equal to three, it's going to tell me it's true. And also I know that I's value is simply just one. So one less than or equal to three would be true. So I know that I'm going to go into the body of the loop. So now if I try that step over, so now I'm going to execute the body of the loop, system and other print lines. So now if I move my mouse over, I will be one. So now if I say step over, I'm going to say I, I'm going to see I is one from the console output, right? Exactly the first time, okay? And then I'm going to execute a second line over here. So now watch what's going to happen. If you look at the variables over here, I is currently one. If I say step over, it's going to be changed to two. At the same time, if I look at expressions over here, you can see i has become 2. And now, however, 2 less than or equal to 3 will still be true. That means if I say step over again, it's going to evaluate this i less than or equal to 3 to be true. So it will go into the uh, body of the loop for the second time. Okay. If I say step over, so now you can see exactly what I predicted. So now what's the value for i to for printout? If you move your mouse over, i is 2. So if I say step over, you will see that the second line, i is 2. Okay, exactly what I said for the blue one, i is 2. And now I'm going to uh, increment i for the second time, right, for the second iteration. If I say step over, uh, let's predict what's going to happen. At the moment, i is simply 2. If I uh, say step over, i becomes 3, right? You can see now becomes 3. However, if you see that expression over here, i is currently 3, and then i less than or equal to 3 will still be just true, right? So that means I should really still go into the while loop body for the third time, okay? I, I'm, uh, we are not ready to exit just yet. If I say step over, right, we enter the loop for the third time. And now what should we print out? If you move, move your mouse over, i is 3. So now if I say step over, it's going to say i is 3, right? So now we're gonna ex uh, we're gonna execute this uh, statement here for the third time. So now i plus plus is going to increment from three into four. So if I say step over, you can see i has become four. So now we are at we're pausing at line number seven right before we try to evaluate i is less than or equal to three for the fourth time. But if you look at the expressions view, you can see i's value is four. Four less than or equal to three is going to give you false. So that means we should stop now, right? That's exactly the fourth row in the table here. When i is four, four less than or equal to three is going to be false. That means we should really uh, exit from the loop. Okay, that's why if you say step over, you will simply go to uh, go outside the loop and go to the end of the program, right? There's something I should really annotate here for you, okay? So now basically when uh, the state condition here uh, becomes false over here, that means we simply just go for this path over here and then we simply uh, terminate the program. Okay, that's what we have. Okay, so now, uh, okay, so you can see that for the console, we only print out three lines. Okay, that's exactly what I sh have shown you manually on the iPad. Okay, please make sure you're very comfortable with the three kinds of tracing using a flowchart using a table and also using the debugger, right? You want to be comfortable with uh, each one of them so that when you when you suspect, when, you, when you're suspicious about the correctness of your program later, you can always try either one to really figure out what the error is. It's really important, okay? So now, before the next tutorial video, make sure you terminate the debugger by clicking on terminates over here and then you can switch back to the Java perspective. Uh, click on J here. Okay, so now we'll see in the next tutorial video, we should apply the while loop in some with some user inputs using a scanner.